Hi there, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're just waiting on um, a few more people. We've got quite a rush of um, attendees just coming into the, the call just now, so we'll just wait uh, another second or two before we get started. Um, it is Friday after all, so uh, you know what those calendars can be like on a Friday. So we'll just give another second or two to go. Okay, I think that's uh, probably looks like we're uh, we're getting to the, the the peak of everyone joining now, and we're nearly at five past, so it's time to go. Anyway, um, hi everyone, thank you for joining us uh, for today's webinar, uh, either live this Friday at uh, what is now five past eleven, or those listening into the recording. This webinar is called simply Mind the Gap. <clears throat> which is a phrase you hear a lot around security, mostly relating to the skill shortage in cyber and data. But for this morning, at least, is all about the gap between ISO 27001, 2013, and the new 2022 version of the standard. Specifically, the areas you need to address to prepare for your transition. Whilst this session is about transition, there will also be worthwhile information for anyone looking for their first 27001 certification being to that 2022 version. Now, some introductions before we start for anyone who's, uh, this is their first webinar with us. My name is James Keenan. I'm the Information Security Business Unit Manager here at NQA. And with me today, I have David Knott Brown, and he's our Principal Auditor for ISO 27001. First, a little bit about NQA for anyone that doesn't know us. We are a leading certification body with presence around the world, having successfully certified businesses in all the territories you can see listed on the map just now. We are well known for operating in the technology and engineering sectors, and we are consistently in the top three certification bodies for a wide range of standards right across the globe. Just some of the standards and industries that we certify in are on screen now. And we also provide training courses in those areas pitched at all experience levels you would need, from e-learning introductions to tutor-led lead auditor courses in locations right across the UK and Ireland. Please do go and check out our website or contact us for further details on those courses, including a discount for existing clients. Now, well, the reason we are here today, as you'll probably be aware, the new edition of ISO 27001 landed last year to great fanfare and excitement. And we here at NQA have been working hard, understanding the changes and preparing for our accreditation with UCAS in order to start delivering shiny new certificates to our clients. What are the differences? Well, first of all, it's important to note that that is not huge. And in many cases, we expect the new concepts within the standard will not actually be that new to a lot of you. The building blocks to get us all to the 2022 version of the standard are on screen now. To continue to have a valid certificate, everyone must transition by the end of October 2025. And we are taking bookings now for the extra mandated transition day that goes on top of the normal scheduled audit duration you choose to transition at. This, the recertification audit is ideal for this, but it can also be completed at a surveillance visit. Too. As ever, if you need any questions answered, please do not hesitate to get in touch. We will also be taking questions at the end of this session. To make transition smooth, 
and pain-free for you all, we've produced a super easy to follow gap guide and transition tool to help you bridge, nay leap over that void with as little fuss as possible. Time for me to hand over to David now to walk through it with us all. David, over to you. Cool. Hi. Uh, thank you. For, uh, cheers, James. And hello to everybody that's taken the time out of the day to join us today. Uh, as James has just said, I'm going to take my portion of this webinar. It's only going to be a, sh a short and sharp one today. But I'm going to take my portion of this webinar to just talk you through our NQA Gap Guide and our New Look Gap Tool. So both of these resources are freely available as well but, uh, from our website. I'll show you exactly how to find them shortly. Uh, as James said, we're going to compile your questions as we go, and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the presentation. But we've already had a lot of feedback around the two documents you can see on your screen, and we've tried our best to sort of preempt some of the questions and get the content into this webinar. Uh, next slide, please, James. So, firstly, where can you find the Gap Guide and the Gap Tool? So, if you go to our website homepage and click on the certification button shown sort of on the top left uh, of, your, of the slide on your screen, then a new menu is going to appear. On the right hand side of the menu is the link through to our 27001 2022 page. Then if you scroll down, you'll come down to a header which simply says Information Security Toolkit 2022. And both of the documents sit under this header and they're available to download as PDFs. Now, firstly, before I jump into the um, the actual flesh of this webinar, I'd just like to take this moment to correct something that I said during a previous webinar. So whilst we have mandated that gap analysis is carried out and that evidence of this gap analysis is presented to our assessors, we do not require you to use our tool. If you or your, or your consultant have implemented your own gap tool, uh, then you are f free to present this to, our, to, to your assessor during your transition. Just ensure that our assessors are able to see that you perform the gap analysis process and that you can demonstrate that all gaps have been bridged. Uh, however, our tool, it's super simple to use. It's laid out really easily. And to be honest with you, your assessor will be used to seeing this one. So we would recommend that you use our one. Well, for the purposes of this webinar anyway, I will be fo focusing on NQA's um, GAP tool and GAP guide. So next slide, please. Right, let's jump straight in. Um, before we actually open up the tool and look at it, I thought it would be useful to define what it is that we're trying to achieve. So essentially, a GAP analysis is an assessment of your current system against a set of future requirements. In this case, it's the differences between ISO 27001 2013 and 2022. Yeah, if you click again for me. And again, brill. Uh, and in layman's terms, you know, essentially it's, just, it's a strategic planning tool which should, should help you to understand where you are, where you want to be, and how you're going to get there. And for me, any gap analysis that you perform, it should help you to identify and prioritize those key steps required to enable you to bridge your gaps. A solid gap analysis should identify areas where your system does not meet your future requirements. And in the case of the gap tool that we're talking about today, the gap analysis will be conducted as part of the process for assessing the readiness of your information security management system to transition to the latest edition of 27001. So essentially, you perform the gap analysis prior to the assessor uh, coming up for your transition audit. And then we use the tool to signpost to the evidence that your gaps have been, have been filled. It, you know, the gap tool should absolutely complement your gap analysis. And it will allow an easy to follow format uh, to show how you fill those gaps. So yeah, next slide, please. And again, and again, two more clicks. Brilliant. So firstly, as I say, we've published the gap guide. And as you should uh, have a couple of extracts up on your screen now, 
this was produced in order to highlight the new requirements of the of the ISO 27001 2022 edition. If you look at the screen, you'll hopefully notice that we separated the gap guide into clauses and then into Annex A controls. The clauses, to a large extent, they've been aligned with Annex SL, so there shouldn't be too many surprises in there. However, the tool will set out the clause or the control reference, the requirement and the specific gap between the 2030 and 22 editions of the standard. This may be that a clause or control has been tweaked or that there's simply just a new requirement. The guide is to be used as a companion to the tool and the tool really should add that context. Right, next slide please. Let's actually get the tool up. And again, I think you might have to click a few times. There you go, drum roll, please. Uh, so here we have the NQA gap tool. One more click for me. Uh, for those of you that have used one of our gap tools in the past, the first thing you'll notice looking at the screen now is that the forms had a bit of a revamp, it's been dragged into the 21st century. And it's now here, you know, as an interactive PDF. The tool itself, it's, it's fairly self-explanatory, but I'll walk us through a couple of examples of how this should be filled out. Uh, hopefully demonstrating sort of level of detail that we require as well. It's a two-part document. So part one introduces new concepts. And while I won't go through them one by one, you know, I'll just elaborate on one or two shortly. And then we have part two, which focuses on the requirements of the standard and not the new requirements. So this is where, you know, we've had merges, etc. So you, your transition audit, it will be looking for evidence as to how you are satisfying both part one and two, with part two being split between clauses, you know, four ten and the NXA controls. So what will your assessor be expecting to see during transition? They want to see signposting to objective evidence in order to satisfy the new requirements of the standard. They want, they want to be able to see objective evidence the gap analysis has been performed and the evidence of the new requirements of the standard have been met. The gap tool itself, it's set out in such a way that you can record evidence or at least signpost to it, uh, so as I said before, and as such, we'll expect, we expect it to be presented you know, with a filled out gap tool or something similar which points to this evidence during the transition audit. Now looking into the forms on the screen, you'll note that you, the client, are to fill out uh, the boxes on the left of the form. So we've got the title there, it's evidence of compliance. And this is the same for both parts one and two. The auditor then will assess this evidence and note whether or not there's sufficient, you know, there is sufficient objective evidence that each requirement has been met and make comments as required. We'll go in, we'll look at that in a minute. Now a question that I have been asked regularly is why we insist on gap analysis being performed and a gap tool being presented to the auditor. Simply, this will provide part of that evidence base to support the auditor's decision as to whether or not certification to ISO 27001 2022 has been recommended or not. And the gap tool, once filled out, it will be uploaded into your client notes and made available for scrutiny if required uh, you know, by UCAS and by our own decision makers. So if we click into the next slide we'll just show you you know a quick example of how to fill the how, how to fill the um the form out how to fill the tool out uh, i won't labor the point in it it's, it's really self-explanatory so here we go we've got an example from part one nice and easy so when completing your gap analysis as I said before we just require you to fill out the box on the left hand side so you see here the requirement uh the new requirements it's highlighted in the dark blue so here it's the changes in the needs and expectations of interested parties are to be addressed during management review, new requirements. There's an activity. So this is the sort of question and this is sort of, you know, for the assessor to consider, um, you know, are, are those um, needs and expectations of interested parties relevant to the ISMS being reviewed during management review? You know, nice, simple, clean example. And then, oh, if you go back one, There we go. Uh, so simply down here in the box on the left-hand side, this is your box to complete. 
you know we don't need war and peace just a simple the evidence of compliance is that we've got management review minutes xyz you know dated whatever agenda item four which addresses this uh, possibly you know for this one and here's a template to show that we follow the same template every time we do a management review so nice and easy just we signpost to it so next slide please our then auditor our auditors then you know uh, as per any other audit we'll start looking right let's let me see the objective evidence and once they're satisfied that what you've signposted them to uh, you know leads to suitable objective evidence that the requirement has been met and therefore you know the gap has absolutely sufficiently been filled they simply you know will give it a yes well that's what we want you know in an ideal world it's a yes but ultimately and then you know add their notes um but there we go so yes and then add it add his notes um as applicable now this may well just be yes i've reviewed x y and z um evidence or you know if it's a case of unfortunately the evidence wasn't there it'd be a little note to say what was missing it's just that's you know it, it's, that, it's that support act and it, it keeps our assessors honest throughout the process so if you click onto the next slide i've just put another quick example up and uh, hopefully i don't really need to talk through this one this just shows you know uh one of the uh, annex a controls one of the new annex a controls and again the sort of level of um detail we we would expect to see so straight one up here monitoring activities are your networks monitored for anomalous behavior you know how's anomalous behavior evaluated and reported on uh, we just said you know evidence of compliance here and this it, it, it's it, it purely is you know this is me just making up um, mythical evidence as it were and uh, it's that we've got a seamer installed there's an event logs dashboard you know we've got roles and responsibilities for our infosec analysts and uh, you know we've got a full record of how we report incidents etc and, and events so it's just as simple as that and again the assessor will then go away look for objective evidence um, that the requirements being met complete his, his or her side of the box and then move on to the next control so that really is the gap tool in a nutshell hopefully i've demonstrated it really is you know it's nothing to be afraid of um, it's there to help you it's there to help you to you know go through your gap analysis highlight your gaps and to address those gaps and show your assessor where evidence that the gaps have been addressed is so with that being said, I'm going to hand back to James to wrap up. And I say we're going to sit here ready to take questions at the end. So James, back to you, please. Yeah, thanks for that, David. Um, hopefully that has been useful for everyone. A very quick look there um, through the, the, the gap guide and the, the tool. And would recommend anyone, you know, have a look at that, download it try and work it through between um, your ISMS and stuff. But, um, you know, it, it is really helpful. And as David said, um, it really does make things nice and easy um, as we're looking to uh, transition to 2022. And of, of some of that, actually, we've already, um, auditors have already been out looking at some of uh, the ISMSs with that and they've found the tool to be really useful to, to help them get to where they need to be. Um, in fact, I know that all our auditors are really excited about getting stuck into um, our transition visits, which are booking up uh, nicely now and um, really exploring how this new standard is going to work in everyone's ISMS and is working in everyone's ISMS. So I think it's really important just now that uh, we get to some questions. Um, I'm anticipating maybe there won't be a huge amount because hopefully it's quite a simple and um, easy walkthrough that we've had, but let's have a look now when we go to the questions and answer section and as a reminder if we don't get everyone's questions just now we will look to be back in contact or um, publish those because obviously there are the listening in um, to the recording 
questions as well. So let's have a quick look. David, are you ready? If I just um, I, I am working been, here, so I, I am. I've been reading through some of the questions, and actually, I think we've we have answered uh, a good couple of them already. So Sean, sure. um, really good to hear from you. Actually, um, yeah, you've done your own gap analysis using your own SAS tool. Uh, is this okay? Yes, as long as you, you've got something to present to us, Sean, so that we can point to that objective evidence. Uh, hopefully, I covered that in the um, in the presentation. But if you do need more detail, uh, please give us a shout. Yeah, and I, and I think on the the key bit there is, you know, have a look at um, your gap analysis against the, the you know against our one. Because again, that's what the auditors are used to seeing. So just make sure that you've got all those things, so there's no surprises, um, you know, on the day. But in essence, no. If you've went into that work and done your own one, well done, and um, I'm sure it'll be smooth there as well. But uh, yeah, you will be be able to sail through that, I'm sure. Um, couple of issues with the screen being stuck on title screen um, for some individuals, or at least I think I've seen it one clear just now, but. Certainly, um, we will circulate these notes. They will be on the the web page again. So, Saskia, if you look for those, um, just shortly after, you will be able to find them there. Um, and obviously, there'll be the replay as well. So, sorry for the inconvenience. Not entirely sure what's going on there, but um, hopefully, you'll get to see the the slides and a replay. Um, to make sure you get everything you need. Now, um. We've got a question here from Lindsay, and it was 11.22, David, so after we've done the bit, I don't know, maybe we've missed it or um, or something, but where do we actually find that gap tool on the NQA website? Yep. So, uh, funny enough, I've, I've just gone in and navigated to it to make sure that I wasn't telling lies in the, lab, in the uh, webinar itself. But, uh, Lindsay, it's, uh, if you go into our website, nqa.com, uh, um, as you hit the land inside our home page, you should have a set of titles across the top certification industry sustainability solutions etc so that top left button where it says certification if you click onto that it'll open up a menu now we go across to the right hand side of that menu we've got iso 27001 2022 information security which then will take us to our 27001 page and then it's about sort of three quarters of the way down let me see yeah about three quarters of the way down we have our information security toolkit and there's a couple of case studies uh, a few other bits of documentation but at the bottom there in the uh, in the bottom three sets of documents you've got the gap analysis and you've also got the gap da uh, the gap guide however uh, and this hopefully will answer one of the other questions that we've seen um you know, if, if you are struggling, please reach out to your client's executive or speak to um, whoever you do at NQA to arrange your audits and they'll happily either send you a link or send you a copy of the tool as well. So we can double that up quite happily. Yeah, cool. And I think, uh, Lindsay, that uh, Lindsay's question there is probably uh, the answer to that is answer and some bodies as well. So onto the website, you can download it there. It's, uh, it's available for you to to go and self-serve their body. So hopefully that answers your question. Patricia has asked if it's available in the the, the USA. Um, clearly you can still access it on the site that uh, David's just detailed there just now. Um, what, that, what I'll do, I'll speak with the, our US uh, colleagues and make sure that it is made available on theirs as well. So uh, that's a really good question. It's something that, to be honest, I hadn't even thought of. So I'll just make sure that it's available. I assume it probably already is, though. Yep, cool. So, and we've got um, just a restatement there saying it's good to see we're keeping it uh, to the, the KISS principle uh, of nice and simple there, which is absolutely what we're aiming for. Um, and hopefully that's great. So thank you, Vidya, for your comment there. Um, now, let me see, we've got a question. Um, from Georges here. It seems that part two and Annex A of the gap analysis includes the requirements that would be tested during the audit. Will it be necessary to complete in advance if these are going to be covered during the audit again? Um, yeah. Georges, yeah. I'm, 
All right, George, okay, go for it, David. Yeah, yeah, George, uh, essentially, yes, all we'll have to, because th th there's an awful lot to cover in a one-day transition, there really is. So this is just, you know, essentially a signpost. We don't want great levels of detail, just this is where we go to, this is how we've done it. You know, ultimately, this will provide part of your evidence. Uh, so, so yeah, just fill it out and give us those signposts. I say we don't, we don't need you to upload documents. We don't need you to, you know, go into any great level of detail. What's in your records? That'll be, that'll be looked at. But we just need, just you know, in order to satisfy the requirements of this, uh, of this control, this clause, this is where the evidence is. And and remember, it's it's as much there as a little bit of a bear in mind that you know it's you've got your normal audit and then you've got the transition on top, so it's a little bit of a um, or could be potentially a stressful situation. So it's there as much of, of a sort of help to to you to make sure that um, you know you've got everything you need. So if you've filled that out in advance in terms of where that evidence is, um, you know that you're well on the way um, to you know being where you need to be and getting um, the order to see that everything's ready to sign off. So hopefully that's answered your question there, George. I think there was maybe a, a two slight in, different interpretations for me and David there from your question. So hopefully between us, we've answered what you were trying to do there. So thank you for that. Um, question or statement from Sean. Thank you. Just backing up something we said before. So thanks for that, Sean. Uh, Barry, you've asked, are we able to get a copy of the new SOA? That's not in our gift, I'm afraid, Barry. We're here to assess your work, not to actually, you know, uh, fill out and put together our own uh, SOAs. So the new controls are in the standard. It is for you or your consultant to then uh, produce your statement of applicability, I'm afraid. So that's not something that we can we can directly get involved in or, or help out with, I'm afraid. Yeah. Cool. So, um, thank you for that. Now we've got a question here from Mark. Um, if we are transitioning at a recertification audit, I guess it's quite straightforward. Yeah. But if we're transitioning during the interim, what changes would we use an existing surveillance audit to transition? Would we use a surveillance audit, but plus a day? Uh, and yeah, you're correct, Mark. That is what we said there. There is a mandatory extra one day um, to go through the transition. Um, or would we not use a surveillance audit for this, but need to book a separate transition day? And would a day be enough? How do we know how long a transition audit would take? So it'll be your surveillance audit and that extra day. So if, if you decide to go with surveillance and that's right for you, um, an extra day would be added on to that surveillance audit. Um, and we do it all in one go there. Um, what we didn't mention, because it's not normally as uh, easy, move to do you can arrange a, a separate sort of a special visit to go through transition but we really do recommend it's part of one of those normal um audit ones anything to add there david for that question no um absolutely it's you, you can transition join any of your uh, upcoming audits prior to october 2025 uh, and it would just be that extra one transition day bolted onto whichever one you go to like you say mark the, the cleanest way to do this is at research but some people's uh, cycles just mean that that won't happen and you know i would encourage anybody to to, to go for a research if they can but we can you know we can even come out and just do a special visit if, if needs be but you yeah. know, it, 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 it's your gift to say when you're ready to go, is what I'm trying to say. Exactly, it won't be imposed upon you. Um, you just have to be mindful of that October 2025 date. We need to make sure everything's in place and all um, things are smoothed out uh, in terms of uh, any findings and stuff for that 2025 uh, date in October there. Uh, Mark, I don't know if it's maybe worth mentioning here just as well. That there is an option, of course, um, you know, to do that sort of readiness assessment on the gap guide. You can sort of invite us in for that if you feel that would be beneficial um, to yourselves. We don't maybe anticipate lots of, of that happening, but it is an option available to you to make sure you're ready for that transition. Well, I've oh, seen Stevens um, actually sent a link to the tools. Uh, so what we'll do when we send out the notes for this, James, we'll send that link as well so that they can get straight through to the GAP tool and the um, and the GAP guide. 
Yeah, cool. Um, I've just received a, an instant message there from one of our um, one of our team saying that some people are struggling there to see a chat part within the presentation. So I, what we're reading from just now is just the questions section. Um, I don't know if it looks the same as it does for me, but there is an option where you can ask a question or at least look at the questions that we've got um, and type in from there. And that's been updated live on um, our uh, dashboard here just now. So hopefully you'll get a chance to answer those questions. But if it doesn't and we can't get that working just now, and I know people are in the background trying to help out, if it doesn't, please ask those questions separately. Really, really um, welcome any questions coming because, of course, this is new for us as well, so we want to see as many of those issues that are um, coming up while you're looking to get ready for your transition um, as well. Yeah, cool. Right, George, yep, yeah, you sort of uh, right there. So absolutely, we don't assess against 27,002. That is your implementation guideline. We solely assess against the requirements of ISO 27001. So hopefully that answers that. And Rachel's asked during the transition assessment, is this is the finding structure still the same? So is it still major non-conformity, minor non-conformity opportunity for improvement? Yes, absolutely, Rachel. That doesn't change. Um, we've got a question here on major challenges, David, that our clients have seen. Um, would you have heard of anything that would have been a major challenge as yet, do you think? I think the biggest challenge at the moment is actually getting your head around the new layout of Annex A. Uh, I think there's plenty of mapping tools out there. Uh, you know, a lot of people have actually done most of the heavy lifting for you, but that seems to have been the biggest challenge. Is is that sort of that that mapping and coming and coming up with a new statement of applicability? The second challenge and i think we've we've talked about this on a few webinars is uh, most of the ideas and concepts that are introduced in 27001-2022 are not uncommon the, the, you know most organizations have already implemented sort of 90 percent of them the big one that is new to a lot of organizations certainly in the sme area is the idea of threat intelligence you know being able to take information analyze it, decide whether or not you need to act upon it, um, and also evidence it. So from a control point of view, that seems to be the one that's got people scratching their heads the most. But from yeah. a management system point of view, it's the it's the restructure of, of Annex A, you know, because I'm not going to lie, it's a, it's a big restructure that it's gone through. Yeah, cool. No, thank you uh, for that, David. And I think, um, you know, like you, men you mentioned there with threat intelligence, it's the difference between threat intelligence and news <laughs> from some like previous standard was, you know, where do you get your information and news? Well, that's what's happened. Threat intelligence is looking forward and, you know, um, intelligence is only intelligent if it's actionable and um, I suppose more pertinent if it's been actioned as well. So uh, we're looking for, I suppose, or the standards looking for what you're doing with the intelligence you're getting, how it's impacting you and your operation there within your ISMA. So um, that, I suppose, could be um, uh, listed as one of the challenges. Thank you. So um, we've got another question here. Will our auditors be progressively reviewing the GAP tool over surveillance audits prior to research? Um, the GAP tool will be getting reviewed at the point at which um, the client decides they're going for um, the the transition um so you've got till the point at which you've decided you're going for transition and that's when the guys will be looking at the gap tool on that mandated extra day um there so hopefully that answers your question len um a look. i think you answered for this is other question there which I is I think we're pretty much good to go, aren't we? Um, hold on, we have a question here from Rachel. I think we're looking at different bits, David, or we've got them in a different order, so hopefully we're not going to answer the same question twice here. But um, Rachel is asking, on the one-day transition assessment, is the findings structure still the same, e.g. major, minor, OFI? I suppose it's a good point, David, at this point, to say what the findings are and where they would be found against. 
Not exactly. I, 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 yeah, I did answer this very briefly before, but yes, the, the structure of the findings is exactly the same. It's it's still, you know, the gap tool and the presentation of the gap tool is one side of the um, of the transition um, assessment or transition audit, but ultimately it's still an audit, and the findings will still be, will still be exactly the same, Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. So it's as you said, major, minor, um, etc. For that one, it's not yeah. being banished to the naughty step for half an hour and then come back that, that, that that's unfortunately still not one of the ones that we can find on um but yeah cool thank you rachel um question from ollie right at the end and, and i suppose it looks like we've slowed down just looking at the time so let's go with um this one and uh we'll look to close up so if anyone's got any questions get typing furiously now but um at the moment we've got one from ollie saying is the nqa gap tool mandatory and I think David, you covered this one before, but always worth going over again. Um, our particular gap tool is that mandatory? It's not at all. So performing gap analysis that is mandatory. So your your assessor will want to see evidence that you've done a gap analysis of sorts, and he will want he or she. Sorry, I keep saying he. Uh, and so your assessor will then once objective evidence presented during the assessment that that gap analysis has been performed whether that's our gap tool your gap tool or what whatever tool you wish to uh, to create that doesn't matter but actually presenting evidence that gap analysis has been performed uh, is the mandated part thank you for that david and uh, i don't see any further questions here so hopefully um we we uh, sort of answered everyone um at the moment but let's move on and get on with our fridays everyone uh again thank you for those questions some really good ones in there obviously so um uh, please if you're listening on the recording you've got a question that we haven't covered remember you can get a lot of the great support and information um on our website or you can reach out in the various ways on screen just now um, to us, we're more than happy to answer um, any of those questions you may have. And one final thing from David and I, thank you for spending part of your Friday morning with us, um, or again, on your listening, whenever that may be. 